The University of Queensland is threatening to expel a student activist for criticizing its relationship with the Chinese Communist Party. An internal email from UQ made public on May 20th shows a member of its communication team asking a UQ deputy vice chancellor to send a statement about pro Hong Kong protests at the university to the Chinese consulate for review. The email was sent after a pro Hong Kong rally on UQ's main campus that UQ undergrad Drew Pavlo helped organize. The 20 year old philosophy student organized several demonstrations in support of Hong Kong protesters and criticized the Chinese regime's oppression of Uyghurs and Tibetans. Following the protests and Pavlo's criticism of the Chinese regime's human rights abuses and the university's ties to the regime, he was summoned to a disciplinary hearing on May 20th. Pavlo walked out of the hearing after UQ's disciplinary panel refused to provide access to an internal document he had sought for his defense. UQ later published the internal emails after Pavlo gave a press conference questioning UQ's relationship with the Chinese regime. Now people are looking and they're say, saying, wow, this guy, Drew Pavlo, he's a student critic of the Chinese government and now he's being threatened with expulsion. How could that happen in Australia? Well, we've been setting it up for ourselves for years and years and years. And now it's, now it's clear, it should have been clearer earlier. Concerns about the regime's infiltration of the West have been rising during the pandemic and have brought Pavlo's case international attention. The Chinese regime co-founded Confucius Institutes to spread its influence in overseas universities. The regime says the institutes promote Chinese language and culture, but the CCP has openly admitted the institutes were made for the purpose of spreading their propaganda. UQ's Vice Chancellor Professor Peter Hodge was a senior consultant to Beijing's Global Confucius Institute headquarters, or Hanban, from 2013 to 2018. The Hanban is responsible for more than 500 Confucius Institutes operating in universities and schools across the world. On May 12, a UQ whistleblower gave Australian Senator James Paterson a copy of last year's senior staff remuneration report. The report shows the vice chancellor received a $130,000 bonus in 2019 from UQ, based partly on his success in growing the university's relationship with China. UQ is now seeking jail time against me as a student because I criticized their relationship to the Chinese government. Last July, Pavlo helped organize a pro-Hong Kong rally on UQ's main campus. The rally turned violent when pro-CCP students arrived on the scene. The local Chinese consul general, Xu Jie, issued a statement the following day, describing the event as anti-China separatist activities and praised the counter-protesters for their acts of patriotism. Since then, Pavlo has received hundreds of death threats, including some aimed at his family. At no point really has the university ever really tried to protect me. Pavlo filed a complaint with Xu three months later, saying the consul general played a role in inciting threats and violence against him. He successfully obtained subpoenas addressed to Xu, and a court hearing was scheduled for April 20, 2020. But days before his publicly listed court proceedings, UQ threatened him with expulsion. The institution set out a 186-page document with 11 allegations of misconduct against Pavlo. One of the allegations claims that his online posts bullied, threatened, or abused Confucius Institute staff, referring to a photo posted on Twitter of Pavlo wearing what looks like an orange biosafety suit in front of the Confucius Institute. He said in the tweet as a student representative, It's my job to keep students safe. That's why I've placed the UQ Confucius Institute under total and complete lockdown until biohazard risk is contained. And a similar post online shows Pavlo in front of the UQ's vice chancellor's office. The allegation states that the messages and signs he posted prejudiced the reputation of the university to the extent that they publicly sought to suggest that the Chinese staff of the Confucius Institute were infected with the COVID-19 virus. Pavlo replied in a tweet that some interpreted the pranks maliciously and that he didn't target anyone's ethnicity. He said, I distinguished the Chinese state from the Chinese people, and I was satirically mocking an arm of the Chinese state for covering up the pandemic in its earliest stages. Pavlo said this is an extraordinary escalation for a public university to take, spending thousands of dollars to silence a student. We're looking towards appealing this outside the university eventually, because I don't believe anything inside the university will be fair or trustworthy. I think they've already made up their decision. They're going to try and expel me. I don't fear. I, I'm not... I'm not scared. I'm going to continue fighting. A petition against Pavlo's expulsion reached more than 35,000 signatures as of the day of his hearing. Reporting by Shirwin Rong, NTD News.